Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly. Wow, believe me, that is that I am. And welcome to podcast 9.2. So we're going to difference between heat and temperature. We're going to interpret a heating and cooling curve. We're going to talk about melting, freezing, boiling, melting point, freezing point, normal boiling point, condensation, and sublimation. I forgot evaporation there too. Um, draw a heating curve. We're going to differentiate between evaporation and boiling. We're going to explain how the boiling point of a substance changes with atmospheric pressure. We're going to explain how vapor pressure of substance releases with boiling point. Define specific heat, which is new for you. Explain what is meant by high and low specific heat. And blah, blah, blah. Let's get started. So, you're hot. Heat is total kinetic energy, meaning mass matters. Temperature is average kinetic energy, meaning that mass doesn't matter. Okay. So temperature has the units of K or degrees Celsius, and it's measured with a thermometer. Heat has the units of joules or calories, and you measure it with a calorimeter. This is a thermometer. Hey, I feel smart. This is a calorimeter. Hmm. And basically you have a reaction with water, and you measure the heat. And we'll get into that a lot more later. Ding. Oh, you know, I want to do a little bit more. So to differentiate between these, meaning mass matters. So if I have a um, giant ice sculpture of max or a drop of boiling water, the giant ice sculpture of max would have more heat because it has more mass, right? So that mass, the total energy, remember how we learned yesterday that um, if you heat a solid up, it shakes more, ah, 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 and the hotter it is, the more it shakes, okay? Um, so if you have more particles, you get more overall shaking. A drop of boiling water, water, water um, will shake faster, but there's not as many particles, so the mass is less. So that's how mass gets into it. We'll do a little more of that later. Heating curve. The slanty parts are changing temperature. The flat parts are changing state. You need to be able to draw this. Temperature. Degrees Celsius. And this is time of heating. So you start off with something cold. And it gets warmer. And then it flattens out. Okay. So if you start off with something in its coldest state of matter, that's going to be a solid. Okay. So as you heat a solid, it gets warmer. Oh, wow. If I have, an, if I have um, a chunk of meat and I put it in the oven, the chunk of meat gets warmer. Then what happens is it flattens out and it stops getting warmer. When it stops getting warmer, it is a solid and a liquid. And that would be melting. And then what happens is solid and a liquid and all the solid is melted and you end up with just a pure liquid. Then you get a liquid and a gas, and that is called boiling, not evaporation, boiling. And then here you have just a gas. So when a substance boils, notice its temperature is not changing. Okay. So let's say this is 173, and this is 49. And we'll say this is, I don't know, mercury or something. Okay. Yes, you can make a metal turn into a gas. Okay. I can also have a cooling curve which will be noticeably shorter. I do want to point out that boiling is longer and melting is shorter because it takes more energy for the change. And then there's less energy to go from solid to liquid. And this one you start with a gas, then instead of the opposite of boiling would be condensing. And I have a pure liquid. And the opposite of melting is freezing. Now, these are all words you know. Maybe condensing is new, but I doubt it. And this is a pure solid. And remember, at phase changes, you have both states of matter. Ding. Make a heating curve for a substance called Hunter. The melting point is 155. The boiling point is 210. Why is boiling longer than melting? And I think we just answered that. So the heating curve, so we're going to start out with being cold. So we'll start off with it cold and we'll just start off at zero just because that's fun. Um, and if it melts at 155, I'll put a line right here at 155. And if it boils at 210, I'll put a line here at 210. Um, and then remember I have to label it temperature and degrees Celsius and then time of heating. Minutes. 
So if I start at zero, I'll go up to here, and then it melts. And then I go up to 10. And there you go. There's your heating curve. Notice those melting point and boiling points tell you where the plateaus are. This is the word plateau, and it's a flat part. Uh -huh. Okay. Why is boiling longer than melting? Small energy change from solid to liquid. Large energy change from liquid to gas. Boop. So make sure it's always longer. Phase changes, you should know the names of these. Solid to liquid is melting. Liquid to solid is freezing. Liquid to gas is boiling, not evaporation. That's very important. Gas to liquid is condensing. Solid to gas is called sublimation. This word might be a little bit new. And gas to solid is deposition, also called sublimation in some places. Okay. So if I have solid to gas, um, this happens. Um, if you live in Indiana, you don't use clothes dryers. You have these little things called laundry lines. And you hang your little shirts up here. Oh, boy. Check out my artistic ability. So you don't use a clothes dryer. You hang your clothes on a, a laundry line, and it will dry outside. Saves you energy. A lot of the hippies do it, too. But if it's cold outside, like, oh, I don't know, today, and it's minus 3 degrees, what happens first is first it freezes, then it sublimes. Okay. <gasps> Yeah, it goes right from a solid to a gas. So the water goes away. Um, you can do this, and if you take a couple pictures and document your stuff, you can do this with a rag in your freezer. And if you take some pictures and write it up and say, I want to show you what happens with it and bring in your dried out rag, you'll find out it will be crusty, but not, but it will be dry. Evaporation is not boiling. I got out of the pool and the water boiled off of me. Ah! Okay, maybe not. No. I got out of the pool and the water evaporated off of me. Okay, so temperature for evaporation below the boiling point and the location is at the surface only. Surfact? No. Surface only. Okay, and then if I were to do boiling it's at the boiling point and the location is throughout well that's a u substance it's o u t ding 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 boiling point and atmospheric pressure a higher pressure means a higher temperature is needed to boil like a pressure cooker. A pressure cooker will make something boil. Um, normally it's 100 degrees Celsius. You could make it boil at 200 degrees Celsius because you increase the pressure. A lower pressure means a lower temperature is needed to boil. So like on top of a mountain, if I'm trying to boil water, notice the pressure that's squeezing it into the liquid state is a lot smaller than if I'm way down here. Maybe this will show up better down here. Hope you can see that. Where there's a taller column of air squeezing it down and a dragon that's chasing it. Boiling's other definition. Vapor pressure equals atmospheric pressure is boiling. You need to have that memorized. Okay? Vapor pressure, the picture. Beep, beep, beep. Here's a little flask. We'll put a cork in it. I hope. Vapor pressure. Is some water particles. There's water particles here. Or whatever it is. Let's go crazy and call it gasoline. Some gasoline particles evaporate. And as they evaporate, you're up here, they then exert a pressure back down on that liquid. That is vapor pressure. So vapor pressure for the picture is the pressure of evaporated particles back on the original liquid. Bink. Vapor pressure is the force of an evaporated liquid back on its original self. Hey, I guess you just did that. This graph indicates boiling points. See this graph? This graph indicates boiling points. 
So when vapor pressure equals atmospheric pressure, so at 760 millimeters of mercury, by the way, that is the normal boiling point because that's what it is around here. 760 was the boiling point for 760 millimeters of mercury. Doot, doot, doot. Let's see, this would be 30. That'd be 30. About halfway between 30 and 40. So it's going to be 35 degrees for ether. And 760, doo, 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 about 78 degrees for ethyl alcohol. And water, A, look at that, 100 degrees for H2O. What is the boiling point at 200 millimeters of mercury? Well, here's 200 millimeters of mercury. Um, the boiling point is 0 degrees for ether. See that? Not ether, ether. And then it is, see, there's 50, 45 degrees for ethyl alcohol. And then it is, meh, there's 70, call it 64 degrees for water. Why is it different? Less squeezing. into liquid state. Specific heat. Specific heat is abbreviated C, little c. Specific heat is energy to change one gram of a substance one degree Celsius. That seems weird. So here's my first analogy. Um, in Indiana, we always run around barefoot because we're hillbillies and we have long legs. If it is summertime, and it is 100 degrees Fahrenheit outside, the temperature on the cement is 100 degrees. And if you walk on the cement, you say, ow, and you quickly run to the grass. Now, the temperature of the grass is also 100 degrees, but because the grass does not conduct heat as well, so notice how this is the, energy, the ability to change right here, it doesn't conduct heat as well, it doesn't hurt as badly. So cement has a low specific heat, meaning it transfers heat fast. And grass has a high specific heat, meaning it transfers heat slowly. Okay, So grass would be an insulator. You could use that on your uh, koozie. Oven and oven rack. Preheat an oven to 350 degrees. The temperature of the air equals 350 degrees. Temperature of the metal rack is also 350 degrees. Now you can stick your hand, I wish I had a different color here, you can stick your hand into the oven and it goes, oh, it's warm. You wouldn't want to do it forever. But you could leave it there for a while and it would feel very warm. But if you grab the metal rack, you would scream like a little girl, Wah! or scream like that cat after it gets cooked. Insulators are not good conductors. Low specific heat conducts heat well, usually quickly, and it's a good conductor. Metals, glass, pans, cement, basically things that would hurt if it's a hot summer day or a cold day for that matter. High specific heat as an insulator does not conduct heat much at all. Insulation coats air and grass. Most living things fall into this category because most living things are made of an awful lot of water. And water has a high specific heat. Review. Can you draw a heating curve? Beep, 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 beep. Yep. Know your specific heats. Low is a conductor. High is an insulator. Evaporation is not boiling. And temperature is constant when phase changes. And most importantly, we're finished. Toodles.